Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Another month has rolled around and here we are in the kitchen with Across the Fence. Our chefs are ready to show you 14 recipes that are tasty and light on calories. To my right is Carolyn Peake from Williamstown along with Deb Plumley and Lynn Jarvis, both from South Hero. Before we start cooking light, we want to announce the winner of last month's drawing for the Book of Buns Cookbook. Our congratulations go to Mary E. Allen from Castleton, Vermont. Mary, we hope you enjoy the many delicious recipes in your new cookbook. It'll be arriving any day now. For this month's free drawing, a lucky viewer will win the Best Gluten-Free and Dairy-Free Baking Recipes Cookbook. It has more than 250 recipes along with gorgeous color photographs. We want to thank Carolyn for donating that and I'll tell you how to enter at the end of the program. We thank you all, you loyal viewers, for watching, including, including Constance Bertha Hume from Burlington, Judy Jakes over in Hancock, whose husband is 84 and loves to cook, Lucille LaDuke, who says that they are all lawyer, a loyal viewing family from Swanton, Teresa Montagnola, 100 years young, from Mariah, New York, Nancy Rivers from Moortown, and from West Stewarton, Stewartstown, rather, in New Hampshire, Monique, Ragacy. Well, Deb, the weather's warming up. People are getting ready to cook light, so why don't you start us off? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So my recipes are all from one rotisserie chicken, light on calories and your budget. Our recipe handout will include tips on cooking a whole chicken and making the broth in your slow cooker. So I'm going to start with mom's creamy chicken and broccoli casserole. It's a great example of comfort food without all the calories. This lightened up version offers great flavor, just under 300 calories per serving. So you want to start by sauteing some chopped onions and sliced mushrooms until the mushrooms are browned and they have given off all their liquid. You're going to sprinkle with flour and stir in some low fat milk and that's going to start to make the base for your sauce. Stir in chopped cooked chicken and some steamed broccoli and let me just kind of stir this up a little bit here. You're going to finish the um, sauce with low-fat mayonnaise and low-fat Greek yogurt. So you can see you've got a nice creamy sauce here. You're going to throw this in the oven and bake it until the flavors have blended together and your cheese is melted. And again, you're just going to sprinkle this with a light amount of cheese just to give some flavor. So doesn't that look yummy? Hope you give that a try. Now, as Judy said, with it becoming nice for summer, how about salads? This peanut sauce chicken pita, it's a tasty way to use up the leftover roast chicken, and you'll find the dark meat stands up to the intense flavors of this dressing. Now you're going to take a cup of shredded cooked chicken meat and add some thinly sliced green onions and some thin pepper strips and you're going to top it with a peanut satay sauce. And if you don't want to buy this in the grocery store, I've included a recipe so you can do like I do and make your own. Once you try this, you're going to find this sauce is going to be a staple in your pantry. Arrange this on a plate with some shredded carrots, some mung bean sprouts, and your guests can either fill a wrap or fill a pita with this yummy salad. This is one of my go-to summer salads, and it's 375 calories per serving. So that is fabulous. Now, you're going to get your daily complement of vegetables with this hodgepodge minestrone soup. You're going to start with browning diced onions and garlic. I had a few stalks of celery on hand in the fridge, so I added those. You can be flexible with your ingredients and add whatever is in season. Stir in chopped potatoes and carrots. Season with a bit of salt and pepper and cook. You want to release the vegetable aroma. Now, you're going to add a can of diced tomatoes, or again, if in season, you could add fresh. And guess what? homemade chicken sock from that rotisserie chicken carcass that you cooked down. It's so much better to use your own stock because you can control the ingredients, the sodium, many other things that you find in purchased chicken stock that you may not want. 
So now you're going to add some more vegetables. I added a medium chopped summer squash, a handful of chopped green beans, and you're going to let these cook until they're tender. And before serving, you're going to stir in a can of white beans and a dollop of pesto, because that's going to bring all these flavors together. And you know, soup is good any time of year. So I hope you give this a try. Now my last recipe to share doesn't feature chicken. It's a viewer recipe from Rachel Patty of Enosburg Falls. And this is super easy. It is a lemon jello yogurt dessert. You start by dissolving um, lemon jello in boiling water. Stir it until it sets. And then you add a cup of low fat yogurt. Stir that in. Well, I used my blender and then a cup of crushed pineapple. Put it in your serving dishes, add a dollop of whipped cream and some sliced fruit. This is better than ice cream and the whole recipe is under 300 calories. So I wanna thank you, Rachel, for sending this in and I hope your family gives some of these recipes a try. And I'm going to turn it over to you, Carolyn, because okay. you've got some yummy looking desserts. I do. I do. <laughs> All righty. Well, my first one today is impossibly easy vegetable pie. And this is one that uses the baking mix. And so it's, you just do up your vegetables. You can use broccoli, which is what I use. You can also use cauliflower. And you just have that all set. Get your onions chopped up, your green peppers chopped up. Then you just put everything in the pan, in the pie pan, and then you pour the uh, baking mix, milk, and eggs over the top of it, and you just bake it at 400 degrees for oh, about 35 to 45 minutes, and you've got a really nice, it, this could even, even be a breakfast, and I thought, you know, you could throw in some cut up ham or some um, bacon or something like that, so you've got all kinds of ideas that you can use on that. Now, along with that pie. I'm going to put a chicken salad with grapes, cashews, and apples. And I figured this is bound to be low fat because you're using chicken breast and you've got grapes and apples and some uh, cashews. So you just mix this all up and put some low fat mayo on it and you've got a really nice salad to go with your your vegetable pie or whatever you'd like to call it. Next I have trail mix muffins and these are really good. It makes a lot. It makes a, about 17 or 18 muffins and it has things like uh, raisins and semi-sweet chocolate chips, the little bitty ones. It's got peanuts, it's got uh, chopped apricots. You've got a really nice hearty muffin that, you know, that could even be a breakfast on the go if you want it to be. But we'll put that down there and you've got a really nice meal set up. Those are trail mix muffins. Now, this one is my viewer recipe. This is from Trudy Jackson from Brattleboro. She writes that it's a family favorite with only 187 calories per bar. And even though they're lower in fat and calories, they're delicious and couldn't be easier to whip up. And I think I agree with her. Because you start out with a German chocolate cake and you mix that with some oil and some uh, an egg and you put part of that in the bottom of your pan pat it down, let it cook just a little while. Then you have reduced fat cream cheese, a little bit of sugar, an egg, and a cup of the mini chocolate chips. And you put your cheese and sugar onto the top of that first uh, layer of cake. And then you sprinkle some of the cake layer onto that afterwards. So you have a really nice fudgy kind of a, of a well, for those of us who have to have chocolate, that is the best thing. And then I have lemony macaroons, or coconut macaroons. And if you like macaroons, try this. It's really good. It's got, the, of course, the egg whites, um, lemon juice, lemon peel, 
shredded coconut and condensed milk. So you've not got the fat in this that you would have in some things. So we'll just put a couple of those cookies right here on this plate. And then we'll turn everything over to Lynn. It looks good, Carolyn. I thought so. We'll start with dessert. Okay. <laughs> Eat dessert first. Life is uncertain. <laughs> very well said. Well, thank you very much, Carolyn. You loyal viewers know that I do a lot of traveling and visit some exotic places. But what you don't know is that I'm a rather picky eater. And I find the food in many places that I visit not very acceptable, so I end up eating a lot of tomato soup and grilled cheese sandwiches. But my first recipe is one that I enjoy anywhere, anytime. And it's this beef and broccoli stir fry with just 275 calories per serving. Now, it's made in a bowl and you stir together your beef strips, your mushrooms, your garlic, and your teriyaki, uh, teriyaki sauce and let it stand for about 20 minutes and then you add the cooked broccoli and I'm going to be putting some on this rice while I'm talking about it so you can get an idea of what this looks like. So once the uh, things are mixed together you add your broccoli and cook it for 15 or 20 minutes over medium heat until the sauce thickens and your kitchen smells like an Asian bistro and then you know it's ready to serve. And this is great over rice, as you see, or you could use chow mein noodles. And we're going to enjoy this in just a few minutes now, and we wish all you viewers who are here to sample along with us. Now to go with this, I have a balsamic green bean salad, and here it is with just 77 calories per serving. Uh, first you cook the green beans, and then you stir in some chopped red onions, uh, cherry tomatoes, crumbled feta cheese, and it's all mixed together with a dressing of olive oil, lemon juice, balsamic vinegar, salt, pepper, and garlic. And I'm going to put some here in our dish because this is a nice complement to our beef and broccoli. And it's also great for uh, any kind of an indoor get-together or a picnic. I've seen a lot of uh, grills out on the lawn and decks, so I know a lot of you viewers are getting ready to do outdoor cooking. And this would be a nice uh, salad to go with those outdoor meals. And with strawberry season, fresh strawberries just around the corner, I decided to make these low-fat strawberry muffins, and are they good? It's a recipe from Amanda Denton over in Stowe, and each muffin has just 173 calories. You mix in uh, some nutmeg, low-fat yogurt, and chopped strawberries. Bake at 375 for about 15 minutes. And voila, you have these wonderful moist strawberries, uh, great for any family get-together. You might want to bring them to a potluck or a picnic. Now we're going to move on to dessert, and I have one of my favorites. It's a soft orange custard. Now, we've made six of them, but I'll show you these two. Uh, 208 calories per serving. And uh, you start with the regular custard ingredients. You add some orange juice, orange zest, and a little lemon juice. Bake at 375 in an oven with a, in a pan of water, about an inch of water. And you cook it for 40 minutes until the custard starts to thicken. And then it's delicious, warm or cold, and it keeps well in the refrigerator if you have leftovers. And my last recipe is the piece de resistance my black forest cake with just 186 calories. Uh, included among the ingredients in the cake is ch cherry juice, applesauce, and baking cocoa. And when cooked, you top it with a low-fat uh, chocolate pudding, low-fat cherry pie filling, and uh, fat-free topping. And Judy, I'm anxious to get your impression on this black forest cake with less than 200 calories That's per incredible. serving. That's incredible. I almost don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to try it. All right. I'll, I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> All right. Now, cooking light never looks so good. And if you would like to get a copy of these, um, Recipes, as always, we have a couple of different ways for you to get the recipes. You can go online to the Across the Fence website, go to uvm.edu slash extension and click on the To the Fence, um, the link to, to the fence, Across the Fence, and you'll find the recipes on the left-hand side of the web page, including the recipe archive. Now, to get the recipes by mail, send $2 and a stamp self-addressed business size envelope to Cooking Light, Box 188, South Hero, Vermont, 
05486. And please remember to include $2 and a stamp self-addressed envelope to the address on your screen. Your envelope will be used in our free drawing for the Gluten and Dairy-Free Recipes Cookbook. If you aren't ordering today, you can still use the address to be part of our free drawing. To enter, just send along your name and address. And good luck to all of you. Now, we'll be back in the kitchen on July 5th with family favorite recipes, including deviled eggs. Yes. Oh, good, good. <laughs> in closing, best wishes to all the dads out there for a Father's Day coming up on June 17th. For our chefs and our crew behind the scenes, I'm Judy Simpson. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.